Hey Men of Warriors, welcome back to my channel. I am Kate and I share a weekly video with you every Monday to help you progress through the perimenopause, menopause, even prepare well for the perimenopausal years and beyond. I have nothing against HRT. I follow a completely natural menopause. It works really well for me. It works well for the ladies that I work with. And so I hope that what I share with you is going to be of some benefit too. If you find these videos helpful, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss future episodes. Today, I'm actually talking about bone health and actually going into the sort of the myth of simply thinking that eating more calcium is going to reduce the risk of you contract or de developing osteoporosis or osteopenia osteoporosis is like the the worst part that's the brittle bone disease osteopenia is when you have softening bones sarcopenia is softening muscles they're all interrelated and the calcium aspect of it really is more it's it's, it's a small piece of a much larger jigsaw puzzle and you might be doing things today that you think are benefiting you that are actually having long-term negative impacts. So I've also dropped a load of resources and references below this because a bit like the one I did on cholesterol, some of the stuff that you might hear today, you might think, but I don't believe that. And I understand why. Um, so I've dropped the references. You can go and check it out as well in your own time. And just uh, just to sort of help clarify and back up, really, the fact that what I'm sharing with you is what I have found. I've researched it. I trust the resources that the information comes from. So without further ado, we shall jump in. So we always think about calcium when we're talking about bones. Actually, uh, up to 90 percent of our bones are, are formed from a collagen matrix. We don't often hear people referring to collagen and phosphorus which are very important elements of our bone makeup. We just hear about calcium. And so you might think, well, I'll just take more calcium. I'll have a calcium supplement. It won't do, do me any harm and it'll help reduce the risk of osteoporosis. It is not that simple. When you supplement with calcium, if you don't need it, because we get calcium from our diet and I'm gonna share the best ways for you to make sure that you're getting healthy amounts of calcium. But when we are having calcium that we don't need, it is like the body's band-aid. So wherever you have inflammation in the body, that could well be arteries, it will go there and that will cause calcification, hardening of your arteries. So too much calcium when you don't need it is really, it, it, it does increase your risks of cardiovascular events taking place as well as other things. You, I mean, talk about this in a bit more detail, but I just sort of want to go over the, the basis of it at the minute. If you have inflammatory disease, if you have leaky gut, if you celiac, your chances of um, developing osteoporosis are greatly, greatly increased. So listen to what I'm sharing today. Read the references. They'll give you some really helpful information as well. Uh, but just to put it out there, it is a small part of a much bigger jigsaw puzzle, which has very important implications for your health. Osteoporosis is a big deal. It's an invisible killer. The um, huge amounts of people break their hips. They get hospitalized. The mortality rate for a year beyond the hip fracture is huge. Things like uh, infections, pneumonia, blood clots, strokes, cardiovascular events, again, all are highly increased when you have had a hip fracture and trying to recover from that afterwards. There are so many things that we can actually do to also prevent these things happening. I will discuss those at the end, but just know that you are at a much greater risk of dying if you have a hip fracture. So why have rates rocketed so much over recent years? We drink milk, we eat dairy products, we take calcium supplements. So why is osteoporosis rocketing? Because it is. It is not the levels of calcium per se, it is the balance of calcium. So it's what we're getting from our from our food, maybe supplementation as well, compared to what we are doing that is making us get rid of calcium faster. So bringing this into menopause just for the moment, as we go through the menopause, our estrogen, well, all our, all our hormones drop. And as our estrogen levels fall, Cortisol, cortisol levels increase. Cortisol has a, a catabolic effect 
on all sorts of things. It breaks down our muscles, it breaks down our bones, it breaks down our collagen. So, you know, when I mentioned this at the beginning, collagen forms a large part of the matrix of how our bones are, are, are built. We really need to be focusing on main, stimulating the development of collagen, stimulating, getting sufficient calcium from what we're eating, making sure that we have strong muscles so that we don't fall over so that our balance is good so that our core is strong because if you have a strong core you're much more likely to be able to prevent a fall happening if you trip and as we go through the menopause we have a, the osteoblasts which are the cells that build bones don't reproduce as fast as they used to do and the osteoclasts that nibble away at dead bone cells and they're destructive to our bones but they, they have a very important role to play, the osteoclasts are, are in greater preponderance. So we've already got this battle of having, you know, greater osteoclast activity, taking away bone tissue and less uh, osteoblast activity, which is there essentially to build new bone tissue. And it's a bit of a myth that if you drink lots of milk, you will prevent brittle bone disease. There was a lady who I read up upon who was a dairy farmer and had been drinking raw, healthy milk pretty much every single day of her life. And she had one of the worst recorded cases of osteoporosis. So, yeah, you could say, well, she's just one. There are loads and loads of studies like that. One of the references below suggests for every 200 grams of milk you drink, you actually increase your risks of developing osteoporosis by 9%. That's quite scary. The reason for that is because we are the only mammal that drinks the milk from another mammal. Yes, when we're young, when our babies are young, we give them breast milk, ideally. A cow feeds its calf. A dog feeds its puppy with milk. Our closest relative are apes. Would you ever consider drinking ape milk? Probably not. When we drink cow's milk, we are also increasing the risks of all the hormones that the cows are given or naturally have because the cow wants to grow a healthy, strong cow or bull. We don't need those hormones. A lot of us have an intolerance to dairy because we, we a lot of us can't assimilate the sugars that are in dairy effectively. It's also an animal protein. Now, you hear me talk about protein a lot and that through the menopause, we need to increase the amount of protein that we're eating. And that is absolutely true. However, some people eat way more protein than they need to eat. And excess protein is going to have a negative impact on bone health as well. So, I mean, I don't know about you. I struggle to eat enough protein and I'm I eat I'm, I'm eating protein three times, a, three times a day. I have protein in my superfood shake. I have a protein muscle recovery drink as well, as well as all the little bits that I add in. And I still struggle to hit the amount of grams of protein that I try and eat to work out the amount of grams of protein that you need. What is your ideal healthy weight? And that is the amount of so it's, say say my uh, ideal healthy weight is 140 pounds. I want to be aiming to eat 120 grams to 140 grams of protein every day, just as a ballpark figure. When you are exercising, like I do, I regularly work out sort of five days a week. You should be doing strength training. If you're menopausal and you want healthy bones, you absolutely have to be strength training. If you don't use it, you will absolutely lose it. Just know the amount of protein that you're eating and be aware of the of how much you actually need for your ideal weight. If you would like the healthy protein guide that I mentioned, I, I created I created a healthy protein guide a little while back for the ladies in my body confidence group and for me because I needed to find where I could get the best sources of protein fast. If you would like that, just send me a message and I will I will send that to you. It's not it's a really helpful guide. So what increases the risks of developing osteopenia, which is the, the precursor really to osteoporosis? Firstly, a lot of us are not getting our bone density checks. I, I highly recommend you get a DEXA scan. It, it will tell you what your bone mass is looking like. If it's low, you can take remedial action now to improve it. If you are leading a healthy balanced diet, and when I say diet, I don't mean restrictive diet, I mean what you eat and drink. If you are regular strength training, 
you are and, and avoiding the nasties, which I'm going to go into in a minute, you are like you have pretty good bone strength. Um, I, I fell over a while back. I slipped over, landed on the side of my hip, full, uh, literally went boom, straight down, uh, had a little bit of bruising, no breakage at all. Thank goodness. You have to bounce well because things happen, accidents happen, and you definitely don't want to be breaking hips or major bones because it's it takes a long while to recover from them. And like I mentioned earlier, hip fractures have such a high risk of mortality within a year of you actually being hospitalized with a hip fra fracture. So uh, what are the reasons that would increase your risks of osteoporosis? Well, estrogen in menopause, mentioned it earlier, it, it just, it, we have a higher risk factor for osteoporosis because of the raised cortisol. So we wanna be managing our stress more effectively. We want to be strength training. We want to be managing our nutritional stress. We wanna be making sure that we're prioritizing sleep. And yes, I understand sleep can be really hard, particularly getting a lot of hot flushes if you're waking up with that horrible anxiety, if you're waking up with joint pain, but you follow a sleep hygiene system allow yourself to get the best chances of good night's sleep no late night sugar snacking avoid caffeine late don't drink too much alcohol move your body during the day so that you're ready physically ready for bed get out into sunlight that helps set up your circadian rhythm effectively avoid screens as screens are the worst for affecting your sleep negatively and have strategies on hand so that if you do wake up in the early hours you have a way to help you cut shut off that busy brain i have i i have a book on my audible and if i wake up and my brain starts spinning and i i've been spinning for 20 minutes or so i put on one of my books i set it for 15 minutes and it just takes my brain away and more often than not i've actually fallen asleep while listening to my book and then I just continue to sleep. So have a strategy in place if you are waking up during the night. Um, but just understand that there is a lot that you actually can do to improve your sleep. I think we feel very helpless when we go through the menopause and our sleep is affected and it makes us reach for the not so healthy foods the next day. It might make you think, oh, I'm just going to I can't be bothered. I'm just going to have two or three glasses of wine or whatever it might be. You are only hurting yourself more. It does take some discipline, but it is well worth doing because once you get into that pattern of better sleeping, it, it's amazing how it can change everything. It makes such a huge difference to literally every aspect of your life. So make sure you're prioritizing your sleep. Smoking is a major, major risk. I mean, what do all smokers have in common? Wrinkles. They have wrinkles on their wrinkles. Smoking breaks down collagen in the body, which is why smokers are at a much higher risk of osteoporosis, they are breaking down their connective tissue, can lead to the hardening of the arteries, which is obviously increases your risk of heart disease. If they've got, they've got, they've got chronic inflammation in their bodies because they're smoking, if they're then taking a calcium supplement, well, that is just hardening their arteries even more. Most chronic, most chronic issues are related to um, inflammation. And so, you know, how do we identify what's causing the inflammation? What is your diet like? Are you struggling with your gut health? You can always get a stool analysis done. Go to your doctor, ask for a stool analysis. Or, or there are loads of gut health experts, stool analysis people out there. Have a stool sample taken so that you, you can find out what your gut health is like. Have you got parasites? Have you got an imbalance of the healthy to the not so healthy bacteria? Because these things you need to be aware of. If you are not absorbing the nutrients from your food because you haven't got the right healthy balance of bacteria in your gut, you are setting yourself for low grade inflammation, increasing your risk of osteoporosis. Gut health is one of the easiest things you, you, can, you can change. Make sure you're eating plenty of high fiber foods. High fiber foods are the prebiotics. They feed the probiotics, the healthy bacteria in your gut. If you are struggling with your gut health, go to your health food shop, ask for you know a high quality, wide range of gut bacteria that you can take in a capsule and that will help to balance out how you, what, what's happening in your gut. Short chain fatty acids are also essential to healthy gut, but you will get those if you're eating a healthy balanced diet in any case. So you also need a good balance of vitamin K and vitamin D3. 
from sunlight. So vitamin K, you might associate that with blood clotting, but it's also very good for your bone health. So vitamin, there's two types of vitamin K. Vitamin K you find in plants, so make sure you're eating a healthy, balanced diet. Vitamin K2 is created in the gut. So again, if your gut health is off, you're not creating sufficient K2, which you need for good, strong bone health. And again, vitamin D, get outside into nature. And if you, most of us are, most of us are deficient in vitamin D to a degree. So you have a vitamin D3 supplement. I mentioned it pre previously, but celiac disease is a really high risk for osteoporosis because of the, the inflammation that's happening, but also because you're not absorbing nutrients well from the food that you do eat. Gluten, obviously celi celiac disease, gluten can also have a negative, it can be inflammatory for a lot of people. Um, we have what, something that I do in my groups is we have a four week gut healing system. So we, we work out what works for our bodies and what doesn't. And then in, in a really healthy way, it's not like depriving yourself. It's not like going on some four week cleanse or anything. It's, um, it's designed specifically so you can work out what your weaknesses are so that you can remove them and replace them with things that do work better for you. Gut health is absolutely key. I've said it before, but 90% of our serotonin and one of our happy hormones gets created in the gut. 50% of our dopamine, another of our happy reward hormones gets created in the gut. Gut health is absolutely key to good mental health, energy levels, nutrient absorption, just health in every aspect. Also know, just while we're on food, some plants are high in oxalate and oxalates can affect how you absorb calcium. So things like beets, spinach, chard, um, eggplant, um, what do we call them over here, aubergine, they can have a negative impact on the amount of calcium that you can actually absorb from your food. A lot, a, don't stop eating them because they're still really, really good for you. But it might be, you know, if you have like raw spinach, consider cooking it. Um, you, you're likely to be cooking your aubergines anyway, but chard, maybe use it cooked rather than fresh so that you're breaking down that oxidant level in those foods. Those foods in and of themselves are really healthy, but just be aware of the fact that they do, they are high in oxalates and they may have a negative impact if you're struggling with your calcium levels. They may have a negative impact on the calcium that you can derive from your food in general. Um, if you are deficient in vitamin D, you're also going to have a hard time raising sufficient calcium. Um, you also need magnesium, which is a lot of us are deficient in magnesium. Chronic steroid use is terrible for osteoporosis. Sugar, um, the, the obvious ones, sugar, too much salt, processed foods are not going to be good for your bone health. Fizzy drinks are a, a, a big no-no. So not fizzy water because that has carbonic acid. Fizzy drinks have phosphoric acid in them, and that literally leaches your bones. So if you are drinking a lot of fizzy drinks during the day, you've got sodas on the go, you are literally taking the calcium out of your bones. And we wee it out, it gets peed out, and any excess calcium. And it goes back to that balance. So, you know, you might be saying, yeah, I, I, I eat the veggies, I eat the nuts, I eat the seeds, I don't eat too much protein. You know, I, I have a healthy, I do my strength training, but you have, I don't know, six, four, between four and six sodas every day. You, literally, you're leaching it out. You start your day with a coffee, caffeine leaches it out, alcohol leaches it out. So, you know, you may have two cups of coffee, which isn't in excess, you wouldn't think. You have a couple of glasses of wine in the evening. That's not excess. During the day, you have six glasses of soda. You are leaching the calcium away and it goes back to that balance. We, it's not necessarily our levels of calcium. It's, it's is, is the balance right? What's, what are you getting from your food? And what are you essentially throwing away from the calcium that you've eaten or, or, or taken in by the other things that you're doing, like the smoking, like high stress environments, like the caffeine, like the alcohol, like the sugar, like the salt. Yeah. Um, Sedentary lifestyle. So many of us sit down for large parts of the day these days. You have to strength train. You absolutely have to. I cannot emphasize it enough. I know I say it on nearly every video. It is one of the best things you can do for your mental and your physical health. It will prevent sarcopenia, which is the loss of muscle mass. It will prevent osteoporosis and osteopenia, the precursor to osteoporosis. It's good for your mental health. 
It will help you burn calories more effectively as well if you're eating more as your metabolism starts to slow down as you get older. You have to absolutely have to um, strength train. It, great point, case in point, astronauts, when they go up to space, they come back and they have lost their muscle mass or bone, some of their bone mass and their muscle mass because they don't need it. They're floating around in space. S gravity serves a great purpose for us, apart from the fact it keeps us stuck on the ground. But we need to be strength training. We need to be doing weight bearing exercises. The amount of people who I, I talk to and they say, well, I have a cleaning job. I do loads of cleaning and I walk my dogs every day. It's still not the same. You're still not. It's better than nothing, but it's still not the same. Strength train. Get started with strength training workouts. I will drop a link below if you want some help with your strength training or getting started. Fill in the form. It'll give me a good idea of your weaknesses, your struggles, your goals. And then I will be in touch. Um, incidentally, in the olden days, well, not that long ago, in actual fact, you might remember fluoride was given to people with osteoporosis. You may have fam family members who were given fluoride uh, to help them combat osteoporosis. Fluoride does make bones denser, but it makes them more brittle. Bones need, going back to the collagen, they need to be able to in take impact. They need to be flexible, obviously not bendy, but they need to be flexible. They need to have some kind of movement in them. So fluoride is, is no longer given as far as I'm aware, but um, you, just, just while I'm on this, because it might be something you you know recall from the past, thinking, well, what about fluoride? Um, it actually made bones brittle and people were breaking their bones as a result of it. Another thing that might make you think, holy heck, is acid, antacid blockers. So, you know, the things you get heartburn and you take those those things. I, I can't even tell you the names of them because I, I never take them because I know how bad they are for you. They inhibit mineral absorption and they are a huge risk factor for osteoporosis. I think I read somewhere it might even be in the references below that they are acid blockers. So those antacid things that you take are the third most prescribed drug in the UK and the US might be slightly off there but there's a lot of them prescribed they are blocking you taking up the magnesium manganese chromium essential minerals boron uh potassium or calcium the things that we need for healthy bone they block that they are a huge risk for osteoporosis now you're probably thinking okay well that's great so now what do i do do i just suffer in pain i use bentonite clay there's, I've dropped a reference to it below. Bentonite clay is something I have used for years and years and years. It's not something you can suddenly drink. You need to give it like 20 minutes to, for it, the water to absorb it. It's Yes, it's a little bit of a pain, but it's well worth waiting for. I, I actually love the flavor. I, I like it. It is, it, it is quite clay-like. I always feel really clean and, I don't know, grounded after I've had it. It's also got antibacterial properties, fights off uh, various pathogens. Um, that can be responsible for th things like E. coli and staph infection. Um, it, base, it also contains uh, trace minerals that we need, you know, uh, chromium, cadmium, copper, zinc, silica, potassium. Silica is also very important for us. We, we need a wide range of trace chem chemicals and minerals. It can nourish your skin and hair. You can use it for a flaky scalp. If you've got an itchy scalp, you can use it as a face pack on your skin. It can clear up dead skin cells. It can clear up, uh, gets rid of dead skin cells. It can uh, unclog pores. Um, I, whenever I have it also, I take it purposefully to help get rid of heavy metals because it has a negative ion associated with it. Well, the things like lead that are in our bodies, we're full of it. Um, because of the atmosphere, et cetera, that, that has a, tends to have a, that has a positive ion. And so when the negative and the positive come together, they bind and it's a safe way for the body to expel, it'll, you'll poo it out. It, you, you'll expel the, some of the heavy metals in your body through taking bentonite clay. It's, it's really, really safe. It has so many health benefits associated with it. It just acts like a sponge and mops up the heavy, heavy metals. Um, so importantly to note with lead as well is that lead gets stored in our bones. So if you're having, if you have osteoporosis and this is seen in quite a lot of menopausal women, they are, as their bones are becoming more brittle, the lead that's stored in the bones is being leached out into the system and they're having a 
you know, they're, they're having the results of lead poisoning because it's coming back out into their bodies. I have this story. There was a graveyard that had to be moved. It was about a 300 year old graveyard and they had to shift it for development or whatever it was. And so a lot of the, the bones had to be digged up, etc. And when they dug up the bones, whether you, you think this is ethical or not, they tested a lot of the bones to see, you know, compare the, the bone health then 300 years ago to how it is now. And among other things, it was discovered that the lead in the bones was pretty much non-existent compared to our modern day bones now that we're also full of lead from our air, from our food, our soils, you know, soils got it. So if the food, food growing out of the soil, you know, we, we, we're surrounded by lead all the time because of industrialization. The paints that we use, you know, the lead paints were legal until not long ago. And it just goes to show that if you are having living in modern society, we are taking on these heavy metals. So it's important that you are aware of that and that you consider getting rid of them every now and again. And I think bentonite clay is a really effective way of doing that. Um, I would suggest you do get a DEXA scan if you're able to. I, I, you might struggle to get it on national health. Uh, I think they cost about £200, or uh, $200. You may have it covered with your health insurance, but if you're worried about your bone health, go and have a talk with your doctor because it might be that they can refer you for a DEXA scan, uh, particularly if you're menopausal, it would be a great idea so that you know exactly what bone mass you have so that you can start to take remedial action ASAP. I would take remedial action, whatever, because everything I've suggested to you today is only going to benefit you. So the strength training, eat a wide range of plant-based foods, Eat healthy protein. We need healthy protein. There was this lady that I was, I was reading about as well. So she had she had a DEXA scan when she was 71. She bent over to get something out of the fridge and three of her spine, spine vertebrae crumbled. She had a further six crumble throughout the course of that year. And she also had severe scoliosis, scoliosis but never once was it hinted to her that she might have brittle bone disease, that she might have osteoporosis. And the thing that her doctor recommended for her to do was to chew a couple of tums, those antacid things, to give her the calcium that she would probably need in order to make her bone strong. So just in summary, osteoporosis is something that you want to prevent happening. Get a DEXA scan so you know where you're at. Avoid things like smoking. Avoid too much salt, too much sugar, too much alcohol, too much caffeine. Focus on your gut health. Get outside into nature so that you're getting adequate amounts of vitamin D. And if you can't, or if you're living in a latitude that doesn't, you know, just doesn't facilitate that take a vitamin D supplement, eat a wide range of fruits and vegetables. So, so you're getting your essential minerals and avoid things like sodas. I should have said that just a few seconds ago, avoid sodas. I think sodas are probably one of the worst because I don't think many of us understand how data, how, how that phosphoric acid is, is pulling the calcium out of our bones. Understand that too much calcium is also incredibly dangerous for you. Avoid having to go into hospital in the first place by strength training, <laughs> keeping your muscles and bones and cartilage strong and well, uh, well nourished. Prioritize your sleep. And just know that you still have so much power at your fingertips. Drinking milk is not going to fix it. And if you're at all doubtful, please dip into the references that I've added below. I have added them there because I know a lot of the stuff is just like, well, how, how on earth can milk contribute to my risk of osteoporosis? It's hard to believe because we've been, we've been, particularly the previous generation to us, they're just like, no, I would drink milk. Of course, I'm fine. It, studies show otherwise. They indicate otherwise. Apart from the fact a lot of people do have dairy intolerances. So focus on your gut health, focus on moving, focus on how our ancestors would live. Oh, and the other one I want to mention also quickly, it just popped into my mind, <laughs> brain fog, boron. Boron is another essential trace mineral that we need. 
plays an important role with osteo uh, pre preventing osteoporosis uh, dates. They are, I recommend dates to everyone. If you struggle with late night snacking, if you like sweets, just have dates. They're like nature's caramel. You don't need many of them, but they are high in fiber, high in trace minerals and boron. And boron is one of those things that you can get it in prunes and things like that, but uh, dates and prunes, that sort of thing. Uh, I make sure I have at least three dates a day. I always have a handful of nuts. I have, make sure I have some two or three Brazil nuts for selenium. Uh, almonds, macadamias, um, all sorts, Brazils, the, the, the whole lot. Uh, j j just get some assorted nuts and make sure you're having a few every single day. Tahini, by the way, is uh, made with sesame seeds. It's a great way of getting good, healthy calcium. Chia seeds have, contain a good amount of healthy, calci uh, healthy calcium. I feel like I need to put my teeth in. Nature is best. Choose from nature rather than the packaged rubbish that is marketed as healthy and um, avoid and acids and look after your gut health. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts are on what I've shared today and um, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. Thank you for your company and I look forward to chatting with you again soon.